I believe we're gonna go live we really are but at this very moment oh man happy friday oh, does that say the bears are every day all right there we go that's what i love hi from germany really cool okay so what i have right now is everybody saying hi i got uh, of course art for annie here and crosby uh tanya just joined i was actually about to go talk with her but she uh she got it so if um, everybody else that's here, I want you to know I appreciate each and every one of you. But I do want to tell you this. Tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Make sure you're able to join 6 p.m. Eastern Time. The lady herself, Darlene Lancer, will be here. Uh, maybe you know the book. She's an author. In regards to codependency and a whole lot more, we're going to do a long series Tomorrow is the first day. Uh, Diva for the day is Tanya. So, let's get Tanya in here. I know you're in there somewhere. We're all going to get ourselves situated because this is yeah, live. I so we're all good. We're all good. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get in the chair. Actually, my, head, my head's chopped off. Well, you know, sometimes yeah. you have too much knowledge and you have to chop your head off so that everybody can else we, can feel can comfortable. We, can we do anxiety first? Um. Well, actually, we're not. Okay. Uh, actually, we're actually we're gonna do something else. Uh, there's a reason why, but uh, it, it will make itself clear at some point. Everyone else, say hi. Of course, uh, a few people are saying hi to you. Actually, what does this say? The beats. I'm sorry, I'm reading. Some people are coming in from Germany, so I'm, le I'm letting you know. I can see some of the screen here. Uh, okay. People are saying hello to you, a number of things. I can scroll. Uh, let's see. Hold on a second here. Somebody said some. Yeah, so Carissa, Art for Annie. Uh, others are all here. Uh, what does that say? Uh, a black, girl, black girls get uh, getting their shift together. Roots of empathy. Wow, look at you, uh, Tanya. You're pulling in everybody here. Uh, oh, the power of me. Uh, Mo the chick is here. Hello, Anne. I see you, Anne. I see you there. Everybody who's a regular knows I look in multiple directions. Uh, we have another coach online here. Narcoach. Ru is saying hi. Uh, you got you got fans, and you just walked in. Uh, hi again. More highs are coming to you. We haven't even started. <laughs> we haven't even started. Let me kill That's the music. Awesome. 
I know. So uh, everyone, um, I I want everyone to get a chance to meet Tanya. If you haven't, many of you may know her already. Uh, I saw your page, and it was just I've watched it over time. Uh, then I uh, extended an invitation to join me because you talk about a number of things that my audience loves to talk about. Now, just for the record, everybody, uh, Tanya is very experienced in discussing anxiety. Yes. But uh, each and every day, people find it quite difficult uh, to, to get out of bed. Uh, they find it quite challenging just yes. to stay happy, let alone support those who, well, who they take care of. Uh, because of, well, you know, we, we could say because of the pandemic, but people were feeling this challenge before the pandemic even started. Yeah. So a lot of people write and, and they want to discuss a number of things. Anxiety is a priority uh, on this channel to discuss. Um, but there is a couple of things. Um, well, quite a few. Everybody, y'all know me. So I'm going to do this to let you know, get a little insight on Tanya, how good she is. Now, now, you know, just just bear with me. I'm just going to give you compliments. You can take them any way you want. But, you know, if your head gets big, that's cool, too. <laughs> okay, everybody, just hear me on this. Even no, if you're a coach and you're watching this, even if you're a coach and you're watching this, I love promoting coaches uh, on, on, our, on our platform, this show, as well as Open Session Podcast. So let me cut to the chase. Here we go. Confidence, mindset, relationships, anxiety, mental health, suicide, and communication skills. That's just, in a nutshell, some of the things that uh, comes across her plate, uh, Tanya's plate. Uh, so if you want to connect, if you're a coach supporting coaches, uh, reach out to Tanya. Uh, hello there to you. Also, Maywish, I see you saying hello to everybody here. Uh, hello to you, my dear. Thank you, my friend, for being here. Uh, she's also a coach. A, a lot of coaches are here today uh, to see That's you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So what did you do? You started a fire. Everybody's going, like, let me check her out. So this is good. No, this is good. I, 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 this is why I want other coaches on to get to know other coaches. So again, everybody. It's a, it's a great platform. It's a great platform. Oh, you're being so kind. Um, low budget show, high caliber guest. So, so, so low budget. Okay, so confidence, mindset, relationships, anxiety, mental health, suicide, communication skills. My hope is uh -huh. uh, starting uh, yesterday and today, my guest yesterday and you, uh, is the beginning of us here at Narc Abuse TV Network highlighting coaches that we truly find encouraging. So I know you can talk about anxiety, but with people oh, struggling okay. each and okay. every day, okay. with okay. people struggling each and every day, their mm -hmm. confidence is under attack by anxiety. Anxiety mm -hmm. literally gets in the way of people feeling that they can just get out of bed, let alone get a good night's rest. Mm -hmm. What are some mm -hmm. things people need to keep in mind when it comes to anxiety? Well, there's a lot of causes to anxiety. Um, I think the biggest one I've noticed with my coaching with my clients is a lot of past trauma that we, we like we, we've gone through it. Let's say it was even three years ago. We overcame that trauma, that situation, that divorce, that loss of job, the health problem. Then we finally have, we've broken free from it. And it's been a couple of years. That anxiety does not go away because it's caused during trauma, right? So what happens is when we've overcome it, people say, well, I still have anxiety and I really can't put the points together to why I'm still feeling this way when I've overcome it. And yes, we overcome things, but healing emotional um, aspects when it comes to anxiety and the experience and the feelings is something that we have to really consider when it comes to any post-past trauma. So I really go back with the client and, and we go back to where the seed was planted. Because when you can pull that seed out and you realize, ah, oh, that's been the problem with my anxiety, even though I've overcome it, I've got past it, that's still with me. So healing anything in the past is so important because that can interrupt current uh, state of mind today. That's not for everyone, but that can be a situation as well. Another cause of... Um, anxiety I would say has to do a lot with uh, daily struggles so let's say you're with the boss and you're at work and he's like okay we have to get this deadline done today we've got to get this and this done current stress can really uh, elevate quickly to anxiety mm -hmm. and just as well as mothers um, that have the home environment they need to care for with children right. 
So uh -huh. it's all these things we got to get done. Yeah. So that can be very overwhelming, which is a daily anxiety struggle for some people. Navigating yeah. around the daily anxieties. Of course, there are some anxieties um, nobody plans for but that can pop up. Uh, time and unforeseen occurrences can happen in everyone's life, of course. But the mm -hmm. daily anxieties can mount on someone to the mm -hmm. point that they literally feel it's, well, their mindset feels like it's under attack because they just can't find a positive thought. Uh, wrong thinking could come in, I negative have, thinking. Go ahead, I have please. A two, I have a two-minute rule, right? A okay. two-minute pause I give clients as a tool. Uh -huh. Let's say you're sitting at your desk and you're, you know, you've got noise around you in your environment at work or sitting at home, doesn't matter what. And I always say to clients, take a two-minute break. Got it. You have to ask yourself these questions. Is it the past? Is it a current state of being today, which is a stressful situation? Or am I overexerting and worrying too much about outcomes of my future or what's going to happen in the unknown? When yeah. you can sit down and distinguish that and take a moment to go, okay, is this in my control? Is this not in my control? That's the first step is evaluating what is the cause. And we don't do this enough. And we all know we should take a moment to reflect, but we need to do that as a number one tool before this we can go to other tools. This is not often uh, done, as you're saying, and you're highlighting to us, just this mm -hmm. two-minute aspect that you're talking about right now. Yeah. But it's vital, though, based upon what you're saying, right? This is very mm -hmm. vital to just take that time instead of yes. having the knee-jerk reaction maybe we've always had and just push right through and plow right through. That two minutes could mean, a, a well, it could save us a lot in the long run, based upon what 100%. you're saying. A hundred percent. So let's say you've gone uh, three hours into your day mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, this hasn't left me for three hours. And you just did that two minutes first tool that I give. It okay. would definitely help the rest of your day. It's like you were mentioning, let's not wait the whole day. Yeah, And right. then be stuck in that, in that yep. feeling and that emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so then it's kind of like it, it snowballs, right? It snowballs, it piles yeah. up. And then all of a sudden we're feeling sorry and apologizing because we blew up at somebody where maybe we should have took that rule that you had <laughs> after a few exactly. hours. No, the two minutes, stick it in there. Uh, go ahead. Exactly. You were going to say, what else? Well, that's one thing to do. And then I think I like to backpedal to one step that I think we should start our day with. Let's say like you mentioned a great point. We get out of bed, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. We're full of anxiety because we're like, oh my gosh, I have 20 things I need to do today. And it's only six o'clock. I stop first thing in the morning. That could be walking my dog, brushing my teeth. And I'm like, okay, I need to set intentions today for my day and how my day needs to go for me. So what we put out, we create, right? What we think about all day, we become. So Wayne Dyer said that quote. I love that quote. So number one is, what is your intention for the day? How do you want this day to go for oneself? Mm -hmm. So for me, I'll say today is going to be a day that I'm going to create balance. Today is a day I'm going to feel, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to have success. Mm -hmm. I days a day I feel blessed. You, we have to put positive thought and positive talk out first thing in the day, and then set what that energy or, or that intention needs to be for oneself. I love it. I love it because you're you're essentially highlighting that we need to put some type of a positive label on the day and shoot for it instead of right. waking up with a negative label, worrying about what's going to be in the mailbox and what we don't have uh, in our bank account. We'll put a positive label and work toward that and ride out everything, ride the wave on everything else. Anything exactly. else, tips and strategies, or keep going. No, you're going to say, you know, yeah, you're the so diva for the day. You're the diva for the day. I'm just oh, a yeah. co-host to you. Okay, so don't, <laughs> don't try to sit there and be nice to me because I know you're a nice person. So just oh, no, cut me off kind. and just keep going because everybody's oh. here. Uh, before you go any further, and, and I know okay. you're going to give us some more, I've got to yeah. turn to the screen because it's blowing up. So i got to. Okay, yesterday, go yesterday I got so involved in the conversation, I almost did it right now to the point that I forget everybody here. So let me let me bring them in to the okay. conversation. Give me just a second here. I'm going to do some scrolling sure. here. Uh, we, um, of course, everybody told you hello. Uh, somebody highlights here. Uh, and that's going to. Uh, I'm going to start with Anne. Anne says, "So it stays in the mind and body even years after the initial trauma, right. even if it is years later." Does it ever mm -hmm. subside is what she's highlighting. That is and, then, an amazing and then she okay. and then she says, even if you have done a lot of inner healing work, she's mm -hmm. looking for relief in essence. Um, go ahead, coach. What were you going to say? 
That's a really, really, really valid point she made. So thank you. When we're, and she said, like, I've done all this healing, but why am I still feeling some levels of anxiety? Exactly. I'd have to sit with her to see if she's really gotten to the root. And I don't know her, so I can't say that. So if she did get to the root of the trauma, then that anxiety should be lifted. But let's be really honest here. Even past trauma, past healing, past all the tools, you have to create a mindset. And I'm talking switching that every time. And we've already talked about two tools. Another mm -hmm. tool for her and for others would be the simple things that we don't realize are so important. So I start my day that way and I end my day, just to be clear, at around 10 o'clock. Gratitude, big time. And I don't mean just gratitude for what other people are doing or a situation or sunset or just, you know, something in the environment. I take note of what I've done, that I'm proud of myself. Okay. I gratitude myself because gratitude is known, it's studied, that it actually minimizes anxiety. So when you start appreciating the small things and the things that you're doing for yourself every day and you're saying, hey, look what I did today. You know, that's something I normally wouldn't do. So right. you start to appreciate and it builds up also self-confidence, which we'll talk about after. And another thing that is so simple, when you give back to someone else throughout your day and you take the focus off yourself for just a minute and say, I'm going to go do something for someone that can be buying a coffee, getting somebody's groceries for them, or just being there for somebody, the attention goes off your mind and goes mm -hmm. on to someone else, which is giving love, which love comes back to you. So there's a lot of little things starting your day and ending your day that I feel are very, very prominent and important to do to set the intention and most importantly set your night to go to bed feeling more rest okay. so your so mind it's a it's a planning situation uh when mm -hmm. it comes to going to bed but it also is one to start the day and it's mm -hmm. kind of sticking uh, sticking to a theme for the day that we come up with we don't let the day dictate a theme to us exactly. we can kind of based upon the two minute you're mentioning and some of the other points because you just highly gra highlighted gratitude Mm -hmm. um, so people can hear that and, and find their way to show gratitude, but you highlighted something specific, not what others can do or have done for us per se. Right. But re yeah, repeat that one more time again. Yeah. So basically for what you've done for yourself, I, some people struggle, like you said, just getting out of bed. So why not put gratitude out for yourself? Like today I got out of bed. I went out and right. got my groceries. I yeah. found that challenging, but I did it for myself. Okay. Also, um, gratitude for, say, you study, you're learning new education, you're learning something with growth. Um, whatever you've done for oneself needs to be celebrated more because yeah. then you start to build up self-worth and self-love. You're like, oh, yeah. yes, I'm starting to see all my, my uh, strengths yeah. and I'm starting to be proud of myself. That will shift anxiety as well. And does that leave room, uh, does that leave a door open for you to kind of push or kick trauma out the door? because you're starting to, to deal with the moment of gratitude? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out to you. Can we find ourselves being able to distance uh, ourselves from the immediate pain or reoccurring pain from a trauma because we are in the moment being good to ourselves? I, oh, I don't know. I'm, like, I could do a whole show on past and how to get... Hey, you know, this is the platform if you want to do that. You know, this is the... No. <laughs> this is the, this the thing the, I want to... Well, go I ahead. Think people, I, I think people... You know when someone says to you, just let it go. You're yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't use it in my coaching. I don't use that phrase, I quote, let it go. I think the number one way of letting go of trauma before we talk of anxiety is acceptance of the experience, the okay. peace of the experience, because there's, mm -hmm. you can't have peace in an experience until you accept it. So acceptance is the first thing. Acceptance of your role, acceptance of the other person's role or the situation, mm -hmm. right. then comes in peace and then I can, I, can, I can be okay to move forward. Right. But there's way more to it. Like we say, we got to get into where it started, how it happened. But to answer your question with trauma, I really believe that there's always a piece of memory in us, in our, in our subconscious, right? So we have to learn to still move past that little bit, which it goes back to anxiety that can resurface. So these tools are definitely something that has panned out very well for my clients with using them, for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, on the screen, just a few more, uh, kind yeah, of sure. pattern interruption techniques, um, um, uh, narccoach.ru says, uh, kind of a pattern interrupt technique together with state management, uh, may wish unstoppable. I'm just going to throw these out to you. You latch on, uh, to anything you want, uh, coach, 
Today is going to be a great day. They highlight you got the some hearts there. By the way, you've had tons of hearts on the screen while we've been talking. That's well, I really you. appreciate everybody doing that for my guest, but uh, Tanya truly deserves that. I appreciate it. Uh, start your day with thank you and attitude of gratitude. They're uh, they're saying pretty much uh, highlighting what you said. If you mm-hmm. are positive and have good intentions, um, um, I, uh, they're highlighting that as well. Uh, please bear with me, everybody, if I miss yours. Um, yes, I've got to answer something here, uh, Coach. Somebody is asking, can folks make comments? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you mean comments or questions? Actually, when we do these live shows, please bear with me here, uh, Tanya. Yep. Everyone talks with one another doing the group chat, and they also talk to the guests. Nobody talks to me, which is the way I like it. Leave me alone. No, I'm just kidding. So, so. <laughs> Uh, this is made as a live group chat, but, uh, of course, the diva for the day, our, our superstar for the day, is our guest uh, who is willing to come on and trust me and have this open group chat with you. So feel free, uh, that's dot John 4, uh, feel free to put in a comment or a question. Uh, I would love it if you're able to put all of your questions in the question section here, uh, but uh, Coach, what else do you have for us that you'd like to highlight to us that can be encouraging on this I Friday? I know this is an obvious one with anxiety. I want to state one thing about anxiety, which I've looked into a lot with research and study, and then I'll give this last good point. Women are more prone. Uh, there's a higher percentage of women that do have an anxiety disorder than men. Wow. So it's, it's been an ongoing, uh, ongoing study. And, that, and the reason for that is, unfortunately, women experience violence. Uh, Mm -hmm. more mental abuse, more physical abuse. Mm -hmm. And this is a whole other thing I won't get into, but our hormonal system Mm -hmm. reacts to stress differently. So I'm not saying men don't get anxiety. I'm just Mm -hmm. saying, unfortunately, women have a higher ratio of an anxiety disorder. Um, One other point I want to make about anxiety, and I know this is obvious, but if you're eating well and you're Mm -hmm. doing your best you can for nutrients and vitamins and Mm -hmm. overall activity, that builds confidence too, but it also minimizes anxiety. So I know people say my day is busy enough or I'm not feeling motivated, but that does help reduce a lot of anxiety too. Nutrition, a balanced, okay. healthy lifestyle, movement mm, of, of yeah. any measured kind that's sustainable for, for our given body. Exercise, yes. of course, is the word that people often use. But I'm just throwing out the word movement. Well, Anytime meditation. we can move our body regularly, go ahead, uh, Tanya. And, and even meditation, like some people, you know, have a hard time concentrating with meditation, but meditation is another practice of stillness and calmness too. So exercise doesn't have to be physical, like running outside, but also uh, practicing good meditation and uh, relaxation techniques. Techniques. Yeah. Now, many of you uh, may be hearing this and uh, it may be something not new to you, uh, the reason why Tanya's here and our, our guest yesterday was here and uh, we're having uh, Darlene Lancer here tomorrow from uh, uh, the book uh, Codependency for Dummies is because we are going to be focusing more on this uh, particular IGTV channel, which is Instagram's YouTube per se. Uh, we're going to be having more shows like we're having today and yesterday and upcoming shows in which it's for individuals uh, who have been writing us and contacting us uh, they are children of divorce. They come from the foster home system. They've been abandoned. Many of them don't have someone in their corner to tell them some of the things that many of us have taken for granted that we hear and talk about all the time. Uh, so they want to see shows like this. So please, if you find this educational, but it's, uh, it's not your speed, pass it on to someone who may be entering their journey of life and they need uh, to hear this information. Point them in our direction here at Narc Abuse TV Network, but especially like, comment, share, follow Tanya and her page. Tanya, your page is what again? Tanya Life Coach. Yeah, I love it. It's hey, easy. I love it. It's <laughs> simple. I love it. It's I love it. The whole deal. Uh, thank you, Maywish. I see what you wrote there. You're so sweet and you're so kind. Uh, and there are a number of coaches here. Feel free to uh, talk amongst yourselves. Many of you, if you're passing through for the first time, uh, we are not like anyone else because we're showcasing whoever comes on. Uh, because they're helping individuals. Uh, many of uh, our followers, the age has dropped all the way to 16 and 17 now that are tuning into the shows, and they're looking for some type of positive encouragement like Tanya's giving right now and, and others. Yeah. 
your your light looks great. It gives you a really nice halo oh. effect there. So. Oh, I know, but I don't like that. I'm like trying to figure there. That was bugging me. Yay! Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I, I want to do that live, but that was really no. Nope. Hey, no. Nope. Hey, I told you, low budget show, <laughs> high caliber guest. So whatever you do is okay. I've got something on the screen that we didn't plan uh, to talk about, but I really want to want to address if that's all possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. What advice for a disabled person? who I cannot leave house, or, or in other words, uh, they can't leave the house. Uh, okay. Any advice when it comes to anxiety uh, that you want to point out? And feel free, dot John 4, you, you made that uh, comment there, feel free to tell us even more uh, so that uh, Tanya can, can help you. But more importantly, uh, Tanya is available to you uh, to talk in private if you want to DM her, uh, if we can't go into more specifics. Yeah, that's, that's specific here. Point. It's like I've been doing two shows today, and I've only done one. All right, go right ahead, Tanya. Uh, any advice okay, there for so, Dot John? Now, with him not uh, with not being able to leave the home because of caring for someone else, um, beautiful in a way. That's a very uh, selfless way. That's a beautiful way of being to help others with aid. But it's hard because we're trying to give aid to someone else, and we're trying to manage our own mental health at the same time, which can be very challenging. So I have empathy for that. But number one is, I think, goes back to the morning routine, putting those two rules into effect with mm -hmm. um, gratitude the night before, intentions in the morning. Also, I know your, I don't know your schedule, like what you do throughout the day, yeah, right. but only connecting to things that bring positivity. I'll tell you one thing I do to take away anxiety. It's a funny thing. Maybe he could, I don't know if someone's going to relate to this, but I will play music that's only positive and dance around and have, if I can't leave my house, uh, I'm going to dance around. I'm going to listen to my music. Okay. Right? That's something that relieves anxiety. It really okay. does. So, so we are, no matter what you remember today, only remember two things. <laughs> remember Tanya's page and put an image in your head of her dancing around when you wake up in the morning and you're going to go like, Oh, I am supposed to put on music. Tanya just told me that yesterday. I need to put on some music and I need to move my body. Move whatever works. Oh, oh wait, uh, dot, dot John. By the way, uh, feel free to drop in a fake name, real name, whatever makes you feel emotionally safe, Dot John. And that applies to anybody else. And everybody, please, but, always you know, feel I'm free. To, always feel free to tell us where you're where you're uh, reaching out to us from, even if it's from the planet Mars. You can put that in there. Dot John says, "Oh, music is good help." So uh, he or Thank she you. is agreeing with you. Uh, anything and else? That would be one thing, and then. Um, I think with letting go of anxiety, like I don't know the cause for this yeah. person. Okay. I know it's because of the caretaking. But again, um, there has to be a physical activity in there throughout the day. Okay. So that can be meditation, walking around the neighborhood. Something has to be done physically as well. But I want to stop one thing that I didn't really touch upon a whole lot, which I'm. this goes into what I practice with everything, is mindfulness, being present. What can you do presently in your day to give yourself a more fulfilled future? I know you're giving aid to others, but what can you do for yourself to give aid? So there has to be a plan here where it's like, I'm not going to worry about the unknown. I'm going to create the unknown. So, you know, with things I need to do towards my success. So you really want to look at ways for fulfillment as well, because when you're planning and doing things and being productive, it takes away what's causing that, which I don't know your cause, but does that make sense? Yes, that makes a, a yeah. huge sense. And hopefully it does for dot John and uh, dot John. Please let us know, are you the disabled person or are you the caretaker or caregiver, excuse me, caregiver uh, of the disabled person? Uh, feel free to let us know that if you feel uh, emotionally comfortable to do so. So uh, we got uh, people here from Germany. And, of course, uh, my friend Maywish is here. She's from Pakistan. Uh, we have others that have joined us. Uh, Sharon Ledge Wood. Uh, Tara is here. Maddie uh, uh, Woodcock. Uh, Marina uh, Dez and others. Mochik uh, says that she appreciates your great insight that uh, you gave there. The music uh, you highlighted to us, um, making sure that our body uh, is moving. Uh, you highlighted oh, the yeah. two minute, you highlighted at the very beginning, the two minute tip that you gave, the two minute mm -hmm. uh, uh, tip that a person can put into play. Uh, da John says, I am disabled. So Da John is oh. the disabled person. So okay. Da John if there's some things that you do that are beneficial, maybe you can share that with us as well, uh, uh, as well as some of the, uh, the challenges uh, that you uh, encounter. 
that maybe a uh, coach can talk about now. But if there are some chat, well, some I things that you do that are beneficial, feel free to share them uh, in this group chat as well. Go ahead. You were saying. I have a sibling who grew up with dis disabilities, right? So I can relate to this person, he or she. Mm -hmm. um, and I know the one element for my sister always came down to positive music, yeah. dancing a little bit, you know, if yeah. possible, um, engaging and proper, you know, videos and education on positive. I love Les Brown motivational speaking and all that okay. stuff. So I really right. take and absorb that in. If I'm feeling out of tune, I'm like, someone's got to put me in a good direction in my mindset, right? Yeah. right so right. if I need to take the source from outside, I will. But self-talk, you know, yeah. what we feel about ourselves is so important too. Yeah. So so uh, whether it's, uh, uh, Dajan, whether you have to bob your head or bob your eyes or whatever you got to do, get a little body movement going. Um, I have tons of friends that are disabled uh, throughout my life. And, and so I tell you, some of them dance a whole lot better than I do. I can tell you that right now. So movement is extremely important no matter yeah. what type of circumstance, life, and challenge that it has put in front of us. But mindset uh, is important. You mentioned Les Brown. There, there are a number of things that each one of us can find, right, mm -hmm. that can put good words in our head. Uh, mm -hmm. So that we can counteract some of the time the internal uh, negative thinking that can that can creep in. I have a video on what we consume to how productive we are, right? And what we consume throughout the day makes up how we're going to feel, right? Like our, I said earlier, our thoughts become our reality. Okay. And if our thoughts are on a page of the past and they're not focused on the present, and we're worried about the past or we're worried about the future, all that is anxiousness and stress, right? So I always say, make a note, and I, I really, I keep a journal, keep a note for a couple of days. Where am I consuming things? Is it myself I'm consuming too much, too much thought that's negative? Is mm -hmm. it social media? Where is this consumption coming in from that's keeping me feeling in a stressful anxiety state? Because too much anxiety or too much uh, social media is on. Right? Uh, yeah. Now, now um, Dajan is saying I have a serious nerve pain uh, that keep me housebound. But he's saying music, because he's throwing in his things that work for him, music, art, and humor, and then family. Uh, so he, he's found a way. That's, 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 not, that's not too bad. That's four really good pillars that work for him. Um, oh, I think that's beautiful. What, when it comes positive. to, I, I, I know if there's anxiety that you may uh, have there, excuse me, anxiety points that you may have there to highlight. But I have to ask about, you, you mentioned mindset. You said that a moment ago, and we, we talked a little bit uh, about it in the show prep that we did together. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to mindset and anxiety, they really have a profound effect on each other. 100%, because if you're in an illusional state of thinking, which is I'm creating a, a story in my head, hasn't happened yet, but Got I'm going to put an expectation on the outcome because I don't know what's going to happen, that alone is going to take your level of balance right up to anxiety because now you've got a negative outcome to a situation that hasn't occurred. So mindfulness and a, a mindset is so important because how many times has someone said, well, I created this story in my head and it didn't even happen, right? But yeah. anxiety, having issues with anxiety um, is challenging. And that's one thing that's very common with people with anxiety and high levels is that they, they consume every event. They worry about every situation, everybody else, themselves, everything yeah. going on or they project a lot of fear of the unknown, which forms anxiety too, right? So mindset is key, what we do to replace all that. So that means that either through maybe the caregivers or some other circumstance and situation in life, someone has begun to live a life pattern of mm -hmm. being in this high anxiety level. Mm -hmm. They're not horrible people. That's not what we're talking about. They mm -hmm. need to now make some type of adjustments. Uh, as it were, take an emotional screwdriver out and tweak here and there, but maybe they need tips so that they can make these tweaks. Uh, maybe no one's ever taught them and shown them that. This is something that, if anyone's listening, and when you watch the replay back, I, again, I repeat, like, share, comment, follow, talk to Tanya. Talk to Tanya, and, and uh, maybe she can be of uh, help to you when it comes to making the adjustments you need to make. Tanya, you're going to say something. Well, this is the thing too. Um, there's, I want to make one thing clear because I'm very um, respectful mm -hmm. to mental health. 
some mental health, I'm not going to get into all that, but some mental health disorders act and, and make anxiety worse, right? So you could have another health disorder and then that causes more okay. anxiety. So I don't want to put what I'm giving all here as like, oh, this will cure you or this don't take your medication. I'm not saying that because every different, you know, mental health disorder does play into difference um, with increasing other areas, you know, for example, mm -hmm. having more anxiety. Depending and, on what and, I, and I want you to know the audience uh, knows that and they believe you 100 percent that you would never yeah. go down that road because this audience, I think they they research and study more than I do. And I and I do a lot before somebody comes on. So they love you because they were piling in at the beginning. But they know you, by all means, uh, don't mean that. Uh, I do have to tell you, because you're getting, people are talking to you while we're talking. Uh, Dajan says, I am a woman. Uh, okay, give me the name uh, uh, of the person that I need to follow. That's, I'm just going to give you a heads up what's happening in the chat. Uh, so Maywish is letting uh, Dajan know that there's another disabled person that he could reach out to. They're exchanging information. This is what we do this for so that everybody can connect and help each other. Uh, and they're, uh, they're thanking you and they're thanking each other. Communication skills, mental health, relationships, there's so much more that you deal with. Mm -hmm. Take us down a journey of good advice on a number of these subjects right now. We've gone 36 minutes and we've, oh. we've packed a lot into it. <laughs> you said, oh, has it been that bad? I'm no, like, well, time goes fast. <laughs> I try to tell people that every time they come on, you know, they hear an hour, they go, I don't know if I could talk an hour. And I said, it goes uh, by really fast. Another, you know, it goes in a big category, self-worth, um, self-acceptance, self-assurance, confidence. But I think confidence is something that people maybe, we're all educated on some level, but knowledge is never power unless it's applied, right? So we have to learn and, and realize we have to practice what we're learning and put it out there as a tool and as something to be part of our daily routine. Confidence is not something we come into this world and we're like, Ooh, yeah. confident. I don't need to work on that. Yeah. Sorry. You do. No right. confidence is something we have to create, right? It's created. And like the old saying goes, fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. No, uh, like, you have to have that mindset because there's going to be times that you feel confident. There's going to be times that you don't feel confident. Right, right. So you right. have to fake it at times. Yep. It's true. Yep. That's, that's the honest to God truth. And, and sometimes, and sometimes we're going to strike out. You know, sometimes we're, we're mm -hmm. you know, we're going to really try really hard, yes. but it doesn't mean that that we can't accomplish something. But go ahead. You were saying, please. So when I look at self confidence and I look at how it's created and it's something we have to master, it's like a craft we have to work on it. Um, a lot of times we don't realize that we're we have to look at our patterns, our beliefs, right? Um, because that and how we're doing our inner self healing and work on ourselves. Because if, if you're not working on those three elements, then you're kind of at a place that you're going to feel here all the time. You've got to take the initiative to check your patterns, right? Where are you, you know, where are you creating things that can be eliminated that are causing you, uh, toxic patterns and, and or unhealthy patterns, right? Um, your beliefs have to be in a, in a positive state of mind too, in a positive way, what your belief system is. And any inner healing. So when you kind of work on those things and you say, okay, that's going to start organically building self-confidence for yourself, right? That's one way of seeing it and one way of working on it. Um, another way with self-confidence too. This is something I give out as an exercise for a client. Okay. All right. So think of it this way. How often are you in a grocery store? But maybe I know COVID's restricted us with masks mm -hmm. on a normal day. And you see people and you're like, oh, I'd like to go talk to this person or, oh, I'd like to engage. But you're not engaging even to pay attention to that. You've got your phone in your face. You're down and you're on a mission to go get that broccoli, that chicken. And you're not even engaging mm -hmm. in your surroundings. So it doesn't right. have to be a grocery store. But when you're out in public, put your phone away. Put yourself up, like your head up, yeah, shoulders right. back. Shoulders back, eye yep. contact, Right? Yep. You're going to notice how many times that you had your phone in your face and you weren't engaging with people. And I'm not saying you go up and talk to everybody, but if you're feeling and you're in a surrounding where you could engage, right? It doesn't even have to be a grocery store. It could be an event. And you're not looking upwards and you're inverted this way. You've got to take on new challenges for yourself. Posture, eye contact, conversation, mm -hmm. those awkward moments. That's what builds. And I was talking about being courageous as being confident as a tool. Same thing. You have to do these practices. Yeah. Putting, putting a courageous foot forward can literally open the room 
for us to become, oh, yeah. excuse me, more confident. When we mm -hmm. become more courageous, we become more confident. It's hard to become courageous if we are, what did you say? Inverted? Is that what you just inverted. said? You just a said lot of people I are, love that. I used to be very inverted back in the day. Hey, oh my gosh, everybody, so go hot. look up the word if you don't know what it means, but don't be inverted. You got well, We're all a little, no, no, extroverted no, and no, inverted. No, no, I don't, I mean, you know what I mean. I'm just going like, we invert, <laughs> no, I know, I know what you mean, and everybody else uh, knows what, what you mean, but uh, okay, good. <laughs> what Dajan is agreeing with you, he says, I love to start conversation. That's essentially what you're mentioning to everyone here. Yes. Yeah. Whether it's in this format and you're just mm -hmm. passing through on your lunch break or other things, and and uh, uh, or or you're 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 meeting other people uh, that you work with that you never paid attention to because you just yeah. didn't make eye contact. Mm -hmm. uh, take the opportunity to build your confidence by at least saying hello and uh, okay. and moving forward, uh, because realistically, um, we can get into a social media uh, black hole. Uh, to the point that uh, we will isolate ourselves just with our electronic devices and the blue exactly. light that comes from it. Exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. So we have our phones with us 24-7. I suggest when I'm giving this exercise to clients, leave your phone in your vehicle, go mm -hmm. into the mall, go into the grocery store, wherever you got to go, and mm -hmm. you're going to notice you're going to be forced to look up. Yeah. Right? Well, that's we true. Did like you have... do that. Yeah. It's almost as if the phone is calling us when we go places if we're not careful. Uh, so we have to be mindful uh, that Very we mindful. are taking time, especially in our homes, yes, mm -hmm. especially in our homes, uh, yes. that we don't find ourselves all isolated uh, within 10 feet of each other and not talking uh, simply because exactly. our devices have taken over and separated oh, us out. 100%. And that's what I talk about in that video I posted about uh, building confidence is that you know, when we're engaging all the time on social media, that can take a person into having anxiety right away. That could be what if they're looking at, it could yeah. be negative content, whatever. So we could yeah. talk about that all day too. But no, it's, that has to be set aside to live a balanced life. You can't be on your phone and looking down all the time. You have to have that balance. Of yeah. Making others. a connection. Making a connection, making with, a connection others. with others. Yeah. When it comes to relationships, uh, what is the work that you do when it comes to relationships? And that word in itself, often used, many people make money from it, just uh, uh, making books and a number of things about relationships. Yeah. But as a coach, Tanya, what is your approach? And let's open up a discussion on relationships. I don't, I'm not a dating expert. I'd <laughs> just like to make that clear. I help uh, people with relationships. Well, no, some people ask me that question. Oh, are you a dating expert? No, you, I'm not. You're, you're, um, not, you're not here for that, but because... No, no, but as my coaching, people will contact me and yeah. be like, oh, can you help me with dating? No, that's not my forte. But because with you're a highly intelligent woman, give us some advice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In relationship, I help people come together, strengthen communication um, between two people, try to work on problem solving as well as I do help clients that are overcoming a separation and a divorce. So a lot of endings, as well as trying to conjugate and make things work in the present with their partner. Trying to make things work in the present. Yes. When it comes to the present, mm -hmm. what are the challenges that often get in the way when it comes to communication skills? Okay, I want you to think of it this way as a scenario. Okay, We could all relate to this. You go to your partner... And you say, I feel really upset. I'm really hurt. I'm really frustrated. You did this. You did that. And emotions and feelings are the first thing you state to your partner. Right away, that partner holds back because they're feeling attacked right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. My encouragement of communication is start your communication with logic and facts. Go to your partner, of course, in a calm, compassionate state of mind, and say, these are the logics, like meaning for yourself, get logical. Get the facts and what it is you need to communicate. Of course, use emotion and feeling, but leave that to the end. Because mm -hmm. if you start that way, everyone's getting up their defense mechanism right away. Come in with facts, communicate a solution, work on how we can communicate a solution with each other, right. then talk about how the feeling and the emotion felt about what took place. Because we still have to validate our feelings and our emotions, but we don't want to start with that. That always ends in a way that nothing gets resolved. It's almost as if the feelings and emotions, unless we're going to lead with a hug and then start the discussion, uh, or we're going to lead the discussion off with a kiss, um, if we're not going to lead the, the discussion 
that way with our emotions, we can, we can sabotage the end of the conversation and the rest of the night, the rest of the week, the rest of the month, and the, the marriage uh, by leading with emotion that, what did you say, is not calm and, 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 and under control? Leading with the left brain. Okay, so we're going to start a conversation. Uh, I come to you, mm-hmm. and I say to you, whether it's a romantic relationship, I, I was, uh, when I say relationships, I was leaving it open to a number of different types, but let's mm-hmm. just say I come to you, Tanya, and I say to you, I thoroughly don't understand um, why you did uh, this and that when we were over at uh, ABC. I really feel that you don't appreciate me and what I'm trying to do to be no, with that's you. that's feeling and emotion. I would leave do, that you, out. do you see it? Do you see it? Okay. Now, yeah. now if I turn around, and I'm going to use a different scenario, and I say, mm-hmm. you know, Tanya, I really appreciate a number of mm-hmm. things that you do that make me better. But when you said this, when we were at Frank's house, I really didn't understand it. Could you tell me what you meant by that so that I can understand it better? Because I know you make me better when we work together. I just can't understand what you meant when you were saying that. Help me to wrap my brain around that. Is that okay with you, Tanya? Mm, That is such a perfect example, honestly. Of what? You should be like, oh, <laughs> of, what? Perfect. No, of, of what? Of what? That was perfect. <laughs> no. I of couldn't what? have said it any better. I'm just going, wow. Oh. Okay, yes. That's exactly what I mean. That's exactly what I mean by the example. Yes. Yeah. I, I stole that from my dad. He would talk to my mom like that when he didn't want to, when he didn't want to sleep outside. But anyway, what I was going to say. So. And so, you know why some women and men do this too? And I think women especially, because women need masculine energy, right? More. Of course. Energy. Yes. Yes. And when we go into a conversation and we're not, and a man is ignoring us or they're not coming back mm-hmm. with uh, wanting to in, 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 indulge in, and have that conversation. It's almost, you, it's almost like you're not in the room, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like women just need to feel safe, secure, mm-hmm. uh, validated. Mm-hmm. Um, they just want to feel that that person, they don't want the person to solve all their problems and fix them. That's not mm-hmm. why we go engage in something. Let's say I have a situation at work and I'm really stressed out. I'm not going to a partner and saying, hey, I need you to fix my problem, solve my problem and figure it all out for me because I don't know what to do. That's not why we have these conversations. It's to engage and say, hey, listen, I just need to know that you're available to me and that you're going to value and, and, and appreciate that I have something to talk about with work so maybe we can work together. We, like It's more of a growth connection, knowing that you feel safe, secure, and that you're um, able to know that person's just re- like reliable. It's yeah. not to fix the problem all the time. And I think that's where relationships turn around. The partner's assuming, oh, she wants me to help her out and fix everything. Like, why can't she just do it herself? I'm so annoyed. It's only to do with support, having a support system with each other. Yeah, mo- most, most men often find themselves in situations in which they have not matured themselves, uh, regardless of the age that they have, because they themselves don't understand what support smells, tastes, and feels like themselves. And so, therefore, instead of learning what it is to give it to their partner, mm-hmm. they find themselves being annoyed by it, where they're more willing to support well, their sport, their, their 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 sports team instead of support the very person they go to bed they, with. You know, people that look at it that way are looking at it because they automatically think he or she or he comes again, mm-hmm. wants yeah. me to fix him, yeah. fix her, fix the problem. It's not about that. It's about being together and having a conversation about the day, being supportive, giving that warmth, that masculinity of, of just knowing I feel secure and safe with you to share that with you. Right. So that, that's why these ha- these situations happen. Is that that person's like, ooh, I can't deal with her or him today. It's too much. I got to deal with what's going on in my life. She can fix or he can fix his problems. That's where communication really gets unhealthy. When these things start to unravel in a person's mm-hmm. life, it's usually because there is no strong communication, even sometimes with themselves. Because you're saying anxiety and confidence, we're looking at these tips and tools. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to listen to ourselves just as much as we want others to listen to us. And in both Mm -hmm. cases, we need to listen to when our body is feeling a certain way. Don't be too hard on it. 
Well, sometimes that can carry over based upon what you're saying about communication skills in a relationship. And the partner, the woman may, well, literally just want to safely discuss something. It, she doesn't exactly. want to safely discuss something for a solution. She just mm -hmm. wants to safely discuss something. But yeah, someone else, exactly. if they're looking at it the wrong way. I'm sorry. Well, and, and that's the number one thing. Like, if two people come into a relationship and they don't have strong communication skills, that's where over time you get to know each other and you figure each other out. No one's going to come into communication. For, we're all learning communication. And I'm, I'm in my 40s, right? So we're going to learn communication to improve it over a long period of time. We're not going to be a perfectionist at that. No one's expecting that. But I notice when someone comes from a household, one of the two, where there was a lot of, uh, could be verbal abuse, uh, wasn't experiencing love from the family, mm -hmm. they come into the relationship very shut down automatically, right? So the other person comes in being more warmth and caring, then the communication lines just don't match up. So that's where you have to work with one person, sometimes a little bit more than the other person, depending on their background. The communication lines don't work yeah. well. Do you often see that the person that has poor communi communication skills is often the same person that doesn't treat themselves well? Or do they treat themselves no, really well, but their communication... No. No, sometimes the person that doesn't communicate well, and I say this with kind and respect, they could be a little selfish, um, only because their mind. And their <laughs> I love the way you. I love what. the way you just said that. It was like they you're. It's like you're trying to be really nice to somebody that's selfish in the room or something. No, so they they can be <laughs> a little they selfish. Can be that selfish, was, that was really funny. Wanna... I'm gonna watch this part back just to watch your facial Why expression when you said because. It's like, you know, they can really be selfish. I'm just, no, it's just, it's just the way it's I talk. It's not a normal, yeah. I get, I get Wait, we're having saying. communication skill differences. <laughs> no, just, no, we're not. We're not. I'm just joking. No, I just <laughs> love the way you said it because you were so, you were so gracious as you said it. You were so Grace Kelly about it. You're, so, you're, you're, you're so Audrey Hepburn about it. You were so nice about it when you said <laughs> okay. it. And, and to me, it's go like, no, they just selfish. I <laughs> just go, and you were so better at it saying it than I was. But that person... Oh will probably be in the relationship with those poor communication skills. They can add to a level of selfishness in the relationship is what you're saying? Yes, and the reason I'm stating this one as in one example, there's many. Let's say I own an executive big corporation business and everyone at my job sees me as a great communicator. I'm a great uh, problem solver. I'm good at expressing right. myself, but I can't bring that into my personal life. But I'm right. really I knew you were going to say that. Uh -huh. you're right. Yeah. So this is where selfishness and, and knowing you have the abilities because you've crafted that with your work to be successful, but you choose when it comes to the home environment not to adjust yourself and grow and work on that. Because a lot of people I meet are really successful with great communication with work and they're not good in their personal life or vice versa. So you've got to be able to take that and bring it into the other area that needs improvement. So if it's personal, then you've got to make the same effort you've done to own a big business yeah. to be able to to be successful in a relationship. It's no different. It's just a different category of life. And, and that, that communication skill, even though it may work with uh, 100 to 50, 50 people to 100 people, whatever it may be in a, in a business setting, mm -hmm. uh, it needs to be tailor-made for that person that's your partner. Uh, exactly. So yeah, you, like you, you, can't talk, you can't talk to the forklift, forklift driver the same way you got to talk to your wife. I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Uh, how many it, people be, do you know be, like no, no. That, hey, listen, you know? I've I've seen it. I've seen it myself firsthand. I've seen people mm -hmm. do that and then go like, I don't know why she's doing that. It's gonna like because you can't talk to her like that. <laughs> you just you just can't do that. No why? She should be able to understand. You know, I'm really busy. No, somebody's got to put you in the ground, and it'll probably be her. Be nice to her. She'll have to put you. <laughs> you have to bury you. So be nice. But but we're not, we're not blaming anyone with not having strong communication. The point is, oh no, I am. No, I am. No, I am. I'm blaming. I'm blaming them. No, no, it's no, no, my I just want to I'm blaming them. No, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I just want to You're so all. nice. You're such a nice person. I keep trying to push <laughs> you over to the dark side, and you keep going back like a Jedi warrior. Okay, so so. I'm so, a yes, no, I know. That. I did a show prep with <laughs> you. I, I kept trying to, you know, I was hoping to do that. You know, the show prep. I mean, the right before the show, I tell you we're going to talk about this, and then you say that, and I said I would just, I just want to get her on edge when we get on the show. Nope, the whole nope. show, you're all even killed and nice. 
<laughs> it's so nice. Okay, yeah. As a matter of fact, that's what I got on the screen. I'm looking dead at it. It says uh, from narcoach.ru. Uh, everybody like, comment, share her page as well. She says to you, yes, so nice of you, Tanya. See, like, everybody knows you're nice. Look at that. They just met you. <laughs> they know you're Thank nice. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> the roots of empathy agreeing with you, I believe, here. It says love, logic, facts, solutions, period. Uh, that's what they're highlighting. And uh, others are, are talking here. Focused and engaged in the here and now. That's from the roots of empathy. Walking in the nature, watch it, smell it, and don't distract yourself from it. The others are, have been saying a number of things that they agree with you. Uh, as well. Uh, when it comes to mental health, a mm. person's mental health, we've gone a total of 55 minutes. You've let me torture you and, and have you as a guest <laughs> and as a guest here. No, I'm doing uh, okay. I don't, feel, uh, I don't feel tortured. <laughs> on, on this, uh, I'm going to, uh, listen, I, I, I was going to name this show one thing and, and now it just changed my mind. We're going to call this Lunch with Tanya. So if you're in <laughs> California, you're having lunch, this is, consider this, I'm sorry, my signal may have went for a minute. Hopefully everybody can still hear me. Uh, anyhow, um, lunch Why with Tanya. Why are we Tanya. calling it lunch? I, because you're an hour away from me. I don't know. So, I don't know. Because <laughs> usually between 12 and 2, people are having lunch. And oh, okay. uh, uh, I normally have a show at 1 o'clock or thereafter, so it's later. So you're the, I think you're the first person I've ever had at 1230 my time, which is lunch okay. here in California. So I'm just going to call this show Lunch with Tanya. So um, when it comes to mental health, Yes. That phrase and term, of course, is regularly used. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, what would you say when you hear the, the two words mental health? What comes to your mind? Is your physical health and your mind health. Okay. Yeah. The, the two are not separate, as some people may think. Mm -hmm. You're saying? No, what what are you telling us when you mention those two together? Physical health and mental health yeah your internal health and your physical health your mindset um your mindfulness your 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 yeah i mean it's together everything works together you can't be physically healthy and your mind be a mess right you just can't. can't yeah it's going to show okay. itself one way or the other either or oh, either yeah. yeah we could be mentally healthy but if we're not taking care of our body it's going to show and vice versa mm -hmm. if we're taking care of exactly. our physical body lifting weights, running, doing whatever it is, jumping rope, taking walks. But mentally, we're in a fog or not giving ourselves positive words. It's going to show by the way we treat others as well as ourselves. And we all can be naive to this, but I know I remember a client walked in one day and she was absolutely stunning, beautifully dressed, beautifully groomed. And she just looked so amazing. Everything was put together. And when she sat down, I never would have known if I saw her on the street that she was dealing with mental health. And right. I don't judge people based on appearance. Of course I'm just not. giving an example. Of course I'm like, not. wow, like this is a great example of how society is. Like, oh, she looks this way. She's got her here. She looks this way. They got it together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Or, or, no. Or, or the other way around. They see someone and it may not be as well-groomed as they think they should be. And that person yes. could be just as well balanced emotionally than the next person because we yeah. live with our emotions uh, and, and our mental health. Uh, mm -hmm. And it move, those things move more than our physical body may move. Uh, and they have a profound effect on the way that we treat ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you could highlight to us before we end the show here? Uh, gone yeah. 58 minutes, gone on 59 minutes. Uh, before we end the show, what are some of the challenges that individuals face um, w when they're when they're dealing with negative thoughts to the point that they feel like they want to end their life? Okay. When it comes to suicide, many are confronted with losing their job, with losing. Well, many have gone through divorce uh, since COVID happened. So much has taken place in a number of lives recently. Mm -hmm. But what have you recognized as the coach when you've maybe interacted or had to deal with someone who feels that their existence, um, well, they feel it a challenge to go on? Um, it's something that I've noticed that doesn't just appear with them within a month or a day or even sometimes a year. This is something that can go back to when they were 12 years old, bullied, 
this could be someone coming to me that's 25 years old. I just want to give an example because I have a good one here uh, to your question. So at 12, at 12 years old, you're bullied, you've gone through uh, low self-esteem, you don't feel you have an understanding of your identity while you're here. Um, it goes untreated, not because people don't see it, it's because of people hiding what's really going on within. So a parent can ask over and over again, are you okay, are you okay? And everything looks good on the surface, but then they get to an age at 25 and they look back at everything they've been through, not knowing their identity, not understanding their purpose, not understanding, you know, maybe not having connections with friends, feeling isolation. And the number one thing, it's, it's never one mental health reason or one thought or, excuse me, one negative thought or one negative situation. It's normally not, it's, it's normally feeling that they don't understand their identity and why they're here. They just can't put the dots because of number of, it could be just two or three situations with being bullied, for example, that is, and other things along that line that made them feel worthless mm -hmm. and not having a cause to being here in their own eyes. When it comes to us or family members or individuals that have members of their family that have these thoughts or have attempted suicide, what are some things that family members may need to keep in mind? Um, because you're talking, to, you just highlighted something there. They, they've, they've hid it well. They were, they were oh, hiding yeah. it well. And that's, again, we, we're not going to have time today to really delve into that, but I did wanted to bring up this subject with you because it is something that you can talk about. Um, mm -hmm. family members that are affected by individuals uh, who care deeply for them, uh, they're affected by this as well. What are some things uh, or tips or, that they can keep in mind as well? Well, for parents to keep in mind and other siblings to check out for other siblings, mm -hmm. et cetera, yep. family, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, number one is isolation. You know, we think as teenagers and early adolescents or early 20s that it's normal for, it is normal for teenagers to want to be in the room, isolate oneself. But when you check their phone or what's going on in their social media or their music, it says a lot about their state of mind. So if you're listening to very negative things and watching negative things and, you know, you're noticing the child isn't dressing the same, isn't keeping up with their cleansiness the same, they're not wanting to leave the bedroom, the space to interact with others. These are the small, but they're red flags of wanting to keep an eye on that because is he just, it, the depression is not suicide. That's two different things. It's working together into that category, but it's not everyone that's depressed is suicidal, right? So we want to be able to distinguish by keeping an eye on what their behaviors are daily. It's very important, and especially through their phones, because kids have phones at such young ages now, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we don't know who could be bullying them, uh, mm -hmm. how they could be confused, or, or other things could take place. Uh, you were going to say, what else? I, I've dealt with a few uh, kids, uh, teenagers between 12 and 16. And I remember wow. one, it was basically she felt that her parents, she, she wasn't actively going to commit suicide, but she said, I've had thoughts that come in twice this year, and I don't know why. She was yeah. feeling disconnected from her parents. She felt misunderstood. So there was lack of communication with her parents. Um, she wasn't being accepted by her peers at school. She wasn't doing well in her education. So she tried to communicate this. And unfortunately, it was going, well, study more, interact more. Like it was more of excuses coming back at her. So there was no um, advice. So she got very isolated. And then she came to see me and we, we cleared that uh, up. But it's different for everyone. It really yeah. is different for everybody. And, and it's not always, this is, I'm tossing this out. I'm tossing this out to you. It's not always a matter of it's just a teenager or a person or a mate or somebody that just wants attention. Mm -hmm. oh, no. uh, it may be that uh, they've only been able to hide these emotions or, or negative thinking and wrong thinking and mm -hmm. wrong thoughts for only mm -hmm. so long. And now it's spilling over. You nailed or, it. Or, or, you, you just nailed it. Cause she yeah. went to her mother and said to her one day, I'm suicidal. Do you know that? And that's what got her mom's attention. Yeah. And, so and it literally may point. be just that, that they're just now got mm -hmm. to that point where they now are, can say it, mm -hmm. though they've been struggling with, well, am I moving that way? Or a number of other things. Uh, somebody mm -hmm. here uh, in the chat, uh, mm -hmm. let's see who am I looking at here. Oh, uh, uh, the narc coach dot are you agreeing with you? Uh, 
uh, long-term uh, psychological abuse, things that can contribute toward a person having suicidal thoughts. She's agreeing with you exactly, uh, so forth, no identity. Um, and, well, she's giving you compliments. I just noticed that. You are doing beautiful work. She's saying hi to you uh, because of hi. the work. I'm glad we were able to touch on this subject here in regards to suicide here at the end of uh, our time. Uh, but it is a serious matter that should not uh, please everyone. Do not consider to sweep it under the rug. Go ahead, Tanya, you were going to say. And I don't know if this is something that the public knows or have studied and, and educated as well, but more men are suicidal between the age of 16 and 50. And I've helped a lot of wives and uh, people that have lost their partners, lost their children come to me as well to understand it. So men do have a higher risk of being suicidal than women. It's, it's, it's again, it's studied, but it doesn't take away female population again. But no. we don't, we think men have it all together, tough exterior, right? Well, that, um, doesn't, again, yeah, that, image, that, is, right? that, that isn't yeah. the case. Yeah, that isn't the case. And we no. should not buy into that book cover that's put on by any of us or any person. We yeah. are all affected emotionally on mm -hmm. one given level or another in these critical times that we live in. Go, anything else that you were going to say? I just have to give you, they're giving you props, so I got to make sure I read it to you before we end the live. Uh, Tanya is very focused and on point, uh, magnificent. Uh, the Roots of Empathy. That's uh, Tim from The Roots of Empathy. Thank you, Tim, for saying that for my Thank guest. You. So that's uh, their shout and love out to you. You've had tons of hearts. Um, young uh, Jones, 63, is here. Uh, Akhtar uh, has passed through uh, Care Bear is here as well. Good to see you, uh, Care Bear. Others have uh, passed through and are here. Listen, one hour and six minutes we have gone, and I, I, I didn't know we were going to go that long. I, I really thank you for taking out of your time and away from your thank clients you. to be here. But you, My pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you're sweet. You have officially uh, done something that uh, we have not done with anyone, and you have officially, we, it is lunchtime with Tanya. We just had it today. And if ever you come back again, we have to do it at 1230. We cannot do it I any other time now. I would love to come back. I would love it. I, would I have never it. done a 1230 show and had this many people show up. So they showed up. <laughs> and if they're doing it for you or the lunchtime, I'm not going to separate the two. I'm going to do it. When you come back again, we'll have to do it at 1230, 130 your time, uh, your awesome. Mountain Standard time. Yeah. Um, any last thoughts of encouragement that you could pass on to our audience? For me, I think happiness, happiness equals peace. Happiness is something that we all need to co-create more of, which is focusing more on what gives us that peace. Not things, but internal feelings, internal, internal pleasures. So happiness should be a focus. And that mm -hmm. is something that is done within oneself, not from anything else around us. I might have to change it. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I might have to change the name of the show. It might have to be the happiness hour. I think that's what's going to happen. We have to make uh, it the happiness hour with Tanya. So I just have to. Positivity. <laughs> pos there you go. Pos listen, thank you so much. That's why I wanted thank you, you for on. Me. You're so positive. You're a gracious, kind, generous woman who truly knows what you're talking about. And you deliver it in such a way that everyone can hold on to their dignity when they hear it. Uh, thank you so much. You're so kind. Uh, everybody. Uh, they're saying, well, Dot John is saying thank you. Uh, make sure I'm not missing anybody, so nobody get mad at me here. Uh, everybody uh, has said thank you to you. You have tons of hearts. Uh, no baby hearts either. You're getting them big fat hearts across the screen. <laughs> so, so a bunch of baby hearts and a lot of big hearts. Thank you, Tanya, so much for doing this. Um, this has been uh, well in the making. I've been wanting to have you on for quite a while, uh, and I'm glad we were able to, to have room in the schedule that you were able uh, to meet uh, us uh, and we were able to do this. Look forward to having you on again. Yes. Uh, thank you for uh, everybody for being here for lunch with Tanya. Uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend. Uh, like, share, comment, follow Tanya. Any programs that you have. I'm, I, forgot, I'm, uh, I forgot if I mentioned it. Any uh, coaching programs, anything else that people need to keep in mind? Uh, a website, do, anything, should, YouTube, I, anything. I do want to mention one thing. I do online programming for clients, so everything's given online, so you can do it. And I, I send you a package. We do it together on Zoom. So you can live anywhere in the world, and I can coach you. So that's I'm, good. Uh, I'm glad <laughs> I asked fun. that question. Um, you're getting, again, the, some thank yous. And uh, Roots Tim, from the Roots of, of Empathy, says, Happy Lunchtime with Tanya. 
So I'm going to end the show on that because he said he, he enjoyed being with you today as well. Thank you, I everybody. Enjoyed, I enjoyed your questions. Too. All right. We'll see you later, okay. my friend. Take care. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. You. you too. Bye.